Uh, next on the agenda is a review of the minutes from our April 11th and April 25th meetings. Do I have a motion? Uh, Sarah? I move we approve the minutes from April 11th and April 25th, 2011. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Justin. Yes, on the uh, April 11 minutes, item 66 on page 4, um, <clears throat> it's just a, I think a semantic error, but Mr. Hubner has performed wedding ceremonies. I just, if he's a minister, that's okay, but if he's not, perhaps he organized ceremonies. I thought he worked more as a facility organizer for some of those events, or maybe I'm incorrect. Go ahead, Caitlin. He was the, magician, uh, the musician. He performed. At ceremonies. Okay, but it says has performed wedding ceremonies. Right. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just clarifying <laughs> to you what at. he did. So at. we get to add the word at yeah. uh, before <laughs> wedding ceremonies. Okay, so yeah. with that modification, who made the motion? You accept that? Yes. Uh, okay. Any other comments? All those in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the first item is 88 2011, the Shore Road Pathway. Uh, I thought it might be helpful before uh, I, I see there are a lot of people here that uh, may want to speak. This is not actually advertised as a public hearing, but our town council rules do allow for up to 15 minutes of public comment. So we'll certainly allow that opportunity uh, to occur. But I thought it might be useful for the town manager just to sort of summarize the, uh, the materials that are in our packet tonight and also perhaps just give a very brief uh, uh, history, if you will, of sort of how we got to today. Mike? Yes, thanks, uh, David. 73 months ago, the town council formed a roadway safety working group uh, back in 2006. That committee had a number of public forums, reported out in 2007, and recommended that a shore road pathway committee be formed. Uh, the Shore Road Path Committee was subsequently formed in 2007 and in 2009 recommended to the Town Council that there be a pathway along Shore Road extending from the Town Center to Fort Williams Park. In uh, September of 2009, the Council endorsed uh, a concept plan for the Shore Road Path that had been recommended by the Shore Road Path Committee and the Council agreed to fund initial permitting surveying and design. Uh, it was $110,000 at that point. Uh, subsequently, the, the permitting has all occurred, the surveying, the design. Uh, there were also a couple of authorizations to apply for grants from other sources. Uh, one of those grants was successful. Uh, it, was true, it is true. The Quality Communities Program of the Maine Department of Transportation, and in large part that's due to uh, work of all of these different citizen committees. It's due to the support that's been shown by local citizens in helping to fundraise for it. And uh, you know, I think also notably the work of the town planner, uh, Maureen O'Meara, who prepared quite a bit of materials uh, for that grant. Uh, at this point, uh, there are sufficient funds available uh, for the actual construction of the path uh, from all different sources. However, uh, when you look at the contingency that you need for a project of this size, uh, you need to have some, some funds available up front for that. Uh, the estimated value of the project, according to MDOT at this point, is $937,000. If you add contingency, it's about $1,030,000. Uh, it's proposed the project be funded uh, with the MDOT grant with uh, monies that were set aside quite some time ago for the town center sidewalk where <coughs> which this path ends up uh, becoming part of. Uh, out of. Out of the 110,000 that was appropriated in 2009, there's 26,000 left. Uh, PACS, which is a regional transportation planning and funding agency, it gave Cape Elizabeth $40,000 credit that could only be used for, the, for this project under their rules. It, was, it had to be one that considered in the biennium, that's $40,000. Uh, there's been uh, approximately $100,000 raised uh, from the private fundraising group, and that leaves it, including the contingency, it leaves it $75,000 short. Uh, my, my recommendation to the town council is that that be funded from the Infrastructure Improvement Fund. The Infrastructure Improvement Fund 
uh, comes from building permit. Income was specifically set up to pay for building infrastructure. Uh, is, is not tax money. It is a separate, uh, a separate fund uh, specifically established for municipal infrastructure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, at this point, uh, if anybody would like to speak uh, on, the, on this agenda item, uh, please uh, come to the podium. If there are others uh, besides our first speaker, please line up behind her. Uh, we do have a total of 15 minutes set aside for this, uh, so we'll see how far we get, and then the council can evaluate whether we keep going for public comment. But with that in mind. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Marianne Lynch. I am in a butter. Um, and I was here at the beginning of this project. I served on the council at that time, and I dearly wanted to be here tonight to see your final vote. I'm grateful for the work of the Citizens Committee and especially the work of Maureen O'Meara. I just wanted to mention a few points. The path will be located entirely in the public way. There will be no taking of private property. It requires no new tax dollars. We are fortunate, as was mentioned, to have a very large MDOT grant. And my only regret about this project is that my children are grown and will not have the pleasure of walking to school or walking to Fort Williams. So I urge your um, affirmative vote of this project that has been planned for many, many years and has uh, benefited from the participation of many citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill Downs. I live at, live at 15 Oak Colony Lane. I have just a couple of questions. The first is, I am assuming that you will approve this project today. Do you have any indication of the timing as to when you will put this into the budget so that the public can comment on it going forward? Or would you anticipate that you would wait until you get notification from the state or the federal government that the funds are available? Sir, uh, I could ask the time manager to respond to that. Question. You would do it now? Sure. Yeah, the, the funds are, are, are expected to be available July 1. However, there is a recommendation that there may be some funds available prior to July 1. So it's, a, it's an immediate thing. They're waiting, the state is waiting for a commitment from us to indicate that the local match is ready and the project's ready to go. Okay, so per the town charter, when would this fit into the budget cycle where if you're adding a new capital expenditure? Per the town charter, if you look at the 2009 vote of the town council, yeah. it specifically authorized a project of this size so that that was the opportunity for referendum in 2009. It specifically authorized the project of this size. Okay. My second question is, is that from the inception of the whole planning process for the path, it was stated in February of 2008 that because of the rugged terrain, the plan would not conform to ADA guidelines. Essentially, that ruggedness has not gone away and the plan has not changed, yet it specifies within the application for the, for the grant that it must comply with all the ADA guidelines. I, I see a conflict there, and how do we get from point A to point B? Mike, if you would be willing. Yeah, the, the state does review the plans for ADA compliance. They will be reviewing all the plans. And, the, you know, the, the ADA requirements don't require that every inch of it be ADA compliant. What it requires is that there be segments of it that everyone can enjoy, regardless of any disability that they may have. Okay. Hypothetical. Assuming for state purposes that they state that we comply, but state assume that the feds come in after the fact and it's constructed and they state that it doesn't comply, what are the consequences to the town? Is, is there any estimate of what it would cost to comply exactly with the provisions of the guidelines? Yeah, go ahead. When the state reviews the plans, they work very closely with the Federal Highway Administration. All, all of the, the state MDOT coordinates uh, 100% with Federal Highway, okay. and the plans are reviewed at the same time. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. Would, would anybody else like to speak? Good evening. Uh, Nelson Silva from 11 Old Colony Lane. And uh, I have a few questions. Um, when this project first started, um, the committee a safe access for everyone was going to raise two hundred thousand dollars, 
and uh, they were given till October of this year to come up with that money. Uh, the town planner had made mention back uh, last year that if the matching funds were not available by October of this year, then the town council would have the right to re-examine the grant and whether or not they'd accept it or come up with other funding. Uh, so it was supposed to be a 20-80% match. Uh, looking at the numbers you have tonight to make the sh up the shortfall, it's not only the 75,000, but it's a 60,000 from sidewalk, uh, 26,000, uh, the remaining balance from uh, another budget, and the 40,000 from PACS. Now last year, 110,000 was used to pay for, as you said, uh, for the surveying, permitting, and so forth. And that money came out of uh, 74,000 out of the fond, uh, bond fund for town center in 2008, plus another, another 26,000, or 36,000 out of the sidewalk fund. Did we get the 40,000 grant that we applied for to complete the sidewalk from the town center corner to the Murray property, which, can, which will then connect to the pathway? Yes, we did. Okay. Good. Okay. So that, that 40,000 for PACS program will go against that, I think. Okay, fine. But that still leaves about 126,000 that's being appropriated tonight from town funds to make up for the shortfall on top of 110,000 of town funds that were used to pay for the permitting, which is like $236,000 roughly, which is over 20% of the total cost of this program. The original deal was 20% match from private funds, 80% match from state. Why can't we give the committee until October to come up with 100,000 they're short on, if that's what they're short on? That's my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My name is Heather Altenberg. I also live on Old Collin Lane, number 31. Uh, I have three children, eight, six, and four, and it's a wonderful neighborhood, but we are essentially locked into there. My kids cannot go to T-ball or baseball, which is a quarter of a mile away, without getting in the car. They cannot go to school without getting in the car, um, and I just wanted to put on the record that I am enthusiastically in support of this pathway to create a more active, healthier, um, United Community. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Piper Strunk, and I'm in third grade. Hi, I'm Callie Mahoney, and I'm in third grade also. We ride the bus to school every day. When we get there, we see Carly Chapin, Julia Flora walking to school. We live close enough to school. We can walk. We can walk and ride our bikes. But we cannot do it safely. Please vote yes to build the pathway and keep kids safe. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Jim Kearney, uh, 1015 Shore Road. I'm also the uh, co-chairman and the treasurer of SAFE, SAFE Access for Everyone. I want to give you a report on our efforts and the community's efforts on where we are so far. So we've had, uh, I believe we've had overwhelming and diverse support for this uh, project. Our uh, fundraising efforts have gone very, very well. From a diversity perspective, we've had kids emptying their piggy banks in support of the uh, project. We've had uh, folks at Walk Shore Road on a daily basis giving money for every walk that they take. We've had Beach to Beacon runners. Beach to Beacon itself has given uh, a couple local contractors. Um, we've had over, uh, I think, 220 gifts that have been under a hundred dollars kind of showing that kind of level of support but also a dozen or so gifts that are uh, well over a thousand dollars so we've had a uh, great base of support and to that end the uh, safe committee in support of the shore road pathway is uh, thrilled to be able to offer the town in excess of a hundred thousand dollars so i checked the mail today there are still checks coming in and uh, we feel we've made uh, great progress and look forward to the continued support of the uh, council uh, for the shore road pathway thanks Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Karen Holmes, and I live at 27 Old Colony Lane. 